This podcast is brought to you by our partners at 8 Star Energy. 8 Star Energy, a clean energy company, leading the future of portable and renewable energy. To find out more, follow them on Facebook at 8 Star Energy. I want attacking purpose for football all the time. Now we're going to have backs against the wall and we're going to fight and we're going to fight hard. You've got to show me all the guts and all the determination you've got in your body. You've got to inspire me. A marvellous kick. That's as good as you'll ever see. And puts Graham back in front. From inside the centre square, boys kick the goal. Boys oh. kick the goal. From inside the centre. Oh. 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 Hey fellow Dogs fans, welcome to Danny Boyd, a podcast about the greatest football club in the known universe. My name is Danny McGinley and with me is a man who has who knows all the secrets about footy. He wore the number 17 for several games and I forgot to look up a stat as it's common. Tom Boyd! It's good to be here, mate. If I knew all the secrets of the game of AFL football, I didn't last very long. That's the thing to, to, to really think about. You learned the deepest get... secret of all. What's that, mate? It's better being a fan than a player. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my heart's still, uh, it's still only just slowing down after that game on the weekend. I thought we we had it, then we lost it, then the umpires gave us a free kick and I was like, this is all good. And then everyone started running the wrong way and Daniel Rich kicked at 85 metres and we ended up getting away with it. So... Um, we better bring our guest in, Danny. Considering Let's that we're, we're here to uh, here to talk to it. Michael Rowland, good to good to have you. G'day, Tom. G'day, Danny. Uh, Danny, I know pretty well, but Tom, long time fan, so it's great to great to chat to you. <laughs> what, we're recording this at uh, six o'clock on uh, on the the Tuesday night. What is it? Wednesday? I don't know. Does time have any meaning anymore? Oh, um, no, it was <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to get the obvious question out of the way. I'm sure you get asked this literally several times a day, Michael. What time do you go to bed? If I had a dollar for every time I was asked that question over the last 11 years I've been doing breakfast TV, I'd be retiring happily on a Barbados yeah. island. No, I, I get up at uh, 3.15. That's not too bad. A.M. Yeah, not so great either. <laughs> <laughs> it's, did you say it's not bad? It's well, in the middle of all points that make any sense. It's in between twelve <laughs> and six. <laughs> what time do you go to bed, Boydie? You're, you're, we discovered uh, in our chat so you're a lot more sensible than me, even though I'm like, you know, twenty years older than you. It's actually funny. If it was before all of this um, craziness in the world started, it would have been later. So you might have got up at. Um, I would have gone to bed at eleven, eleven thirty. Yep. Um, but I made a distinct point, especially last year in lockdown. I'm like, I'm going to get up and enjoy the mornings before I go to work. So I go to uh, bed at night. I don't know, maybe. It varies a bit, Danny, but earlier, 10 o'clock maybe, something like that. And you get up at 6.30. Yeah. And yeah. you turn on ABC News Breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when that used to be uh, part of my life. Yeah, yeah. I remember when that used to be a part of my life when I used to wake up to the actual AM radio or FM radio as the alarm on my old yeah. like subwoofer thing yeah. back in the day. Old school. I recall those days as well. So, what, what, Boydie, what this, the, re- the revelation we've got here from, the, uh, from just the intro there, you actually watch the game. Yeah, I always watch it. I just like, <laughs> I just struggle emotionally from years of trauma to like watch it intently. And I, as I've said many times in this show, no commentary. I just can't handle it. It's so, um, so it's too much. How did you watch it Saturday night, Boydie? We at uh, you're at you're in your, your mansion down on the, the overlooking the ocean. Yep, yep. Uh, Nine point five million dollar uh, fifteen bedroom. Um, no, I, I watched it. I watched it upstairs with my fiance. And uh, what a game that it was. What, where did you watch it, mate? Did you uh, just sit I was back? Just, yeah. On my couch with my with my seven year old, uh, he had to go to bed at half time, which uh, was he was he, he mostly dealt with. I think if we make the grand final, he'll he'll have to stay out for the whole game. But uh, even my wife, who famously does not care about footy at all, she came down for the last quarter. It's pretty pretty amazing. What about you, Michael? Did you I, sit I, at home? Yeah, sitting at home. I'm I'm in a house full of dogs fans, so the the roof nearly left the house in the last two two or three minutes of that game, particularly when Bailey. Uh-huh. Smith slotted his goal. It was uh, very tense, uh, a great result, but I did feel sorry for Brisbane. I mean, I, I really rate them as a team. I, I rate Chris Fagan from a distance yeah. as a coach. Um, so, yeah. and the, you know, dusting off that old sporting cliche, only one team could win. 
<laughs> great it was us, but uh, yeah, felt really sorry for the for the Lions. Yeah, there's yeah. such a likable yeah. side. Like I really love Hugh McCluggage. Charlie Cameron's just electric. Oh, awesome. Even yeah, <laughs> at one point when uh, McCluggage was having a shot for goal, I was just uh, literally. My wife said, D- "Can you hear yourself?" Because I'm pretty much just going, "You fucking prick, <laughs> you McCluggage! I really love watching you. Why are you betraying me like this? <laughs> Jeez, I hope you win the grand final if we don't. But fuck you, man." <laughs> Michael, in the first twelve episodes of the show, we didn't swear once. Evidently, Danny's trying to make up for it. Yes. Um, <laughs> a, a little, no, a little known. No, a little known fact, uh, Danny, is that um, Dan McStay is a uh, – he was my best mate all through high school. So it was really? quite heartbreaking to see, yeah, from year 7 to year 12. Um, even beforehand, we actually met for the first time, would you believe, um, in the year 6 schoolboys trials, which okay. is like yeah. how you get into the state schoolboys um, for the football. And uh, we actually played on each other this day at Croydon Hills um, Primary School. And I'd basically been told, mate, just go down and stand a full forward. You're already made it to the next stage. <laughs> How tall were you at this stage? Tall. Like I grew a foot in prep and then I kept growing. Like it, yeah, it was unfair. <laughs> anyway, and then so Dan later, like another quarter later, gets told, you're, you're also like going to come down and like just we're going to hide you down this end because you're dominating too much. This is okay. the first stage of the entire process. So you've got kids from everywhere. And Dan comes down to me and I'm like, mate, oh, congrats. Like you're obviously going through the next trial. And he's like, no, no, no. It's like I'm coming down here to play on you. And he was just giving it his absolute all. And he didn't realize <laughs> that they'd already just like greenlit the both of us. So our first like 20 minutes was me just trying to convince him that he'd already made the cut and him just trying to defend me with his life. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, it was sad to see him obviously get concussed the week before and not get a chance to play. Um, mm-hmm. Certainly, it wasn't enjoyable. So, Michael, is it tense? Is it, isn't your your co host a, a Lions fan? Yes, uh, Lisa Miller uh, is a Lions fan. She's a Brisbane girl, gimpy girl actually. Uh, loves Brisbane Lions, and I, I, I tried not to be too insufferable on on Monday morning. I tried. I don't think I fully succeeded, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a battle of the couch uh, on uh, on Monday morning. And Do you of- text people if, when you, when the dogs win to yeah. beat their team? Because yep. I, I, I don't do that. I think that's a, that's a horrible move. I hate when people do it to me. Don't you so- do the na 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 na? No, I don't. Nah. I don't no, I don't do that. No, Lisa, Lisa graciously sent me a text when the siren blew, congratulating me. Very, very gracious. Yeah, the, the losers can make contact, yeah. but the winners, you have to wait at least 48 hours yeah. is my rules. And I've learned, Except I've for learned. one Brisbane fan, uh, uh, Jerry uh, McCulloch, who's a, yeah. a comedy writer, writes for Charlie Pickering. Um, he texted me such a snide text when Brisbane got the top four. And we didn't. <laughs> so I broke my rule and I sent him the picture of Alistair Lynch doing the choke. And I go, I normally wouldn't do this, but you've got it coming. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've learned from bitter experience not to troll friends uh, various games in the past when the dogs have been up, you know, two goals, three goals, four goals, uh, feeling very chuffed and very good about myself and perhaps saying a few nasty things about the other team being weak and <laughs> where are they? They must be still in the sheds. Come on. And, of course, uh, the, the days or the nights I do that, the Bulldogs lose and I just I turn off my phone <laughs> at the end of the night. All, 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 all well deserved. So uh, I've, I've learned from bitter experience not to be too um, over the top on on the text. Da- da- Danny texts me when he when we lose in like uh, probably after like three or four beers, and he's like an emotional mess. He's like, "What could we have done differently? Yes. <laughs> Why wasn't this player playing?" Yes. And I'm like, "Mate, it's all okay. The sun's going to come up tomorrow." It's so well, what, did, what, what did we think about the last few minutes? I, I'm, a, I'm. A, there's a lot to unpack in it, and there's a few actual like. Obviously, there's a few controversial moments and notable moments which have gotten a lot of traction in the last, um, what is it, four days since it happened. How yeah. did you uh, see the last uh, three or four minutes, Danny? Uh, very um, emotionally. Um, when So it, even my wife there, who's, uh, you know, for those who, who don't know, she's Ukrainian and I refer to her on stage as the Soviet robot. She's, and it, she's just, emotions are an optional extra with her. And, and that's genuinely why I love her. She's just the, the she's the yin to my yang. And uh, so when when Bailey Smith got the goal, I apparently, well, I only know what I did because she described it. She just went, you just jumped out of your seat and ripped your beanie off your head and stuffed it in your mouth. 
which I went, yeah, well, when you say it like that, it sounds weird, but I was mostly trying to cheer and not wake the kids up. So that's why it was, I was shoving it in there. But then, uh, you know, we're all good. And then Brisbane get the goal immediately. And even my Soviet robot wife, she just broke and went, but that, that, that shouldn't happen. Why is this, why is that happen? That, that's not right. How did that happen? <laughs> and I go, this is why footy is painful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he what such about a you? big game player, Bailey Smith? Oh, um, yeah. He, he um, I mean, he's he's he's, uh, he's he's a workhorse in the middle, um, but he's. I mean, that, that that's just a, a, another great example. If another great example was needed of him uh, having experience that belies his age, and and the, and the composure that belies his age to have the presence of mind to be there at the right time and stop the goal. Yeah, and he he's always one of those guys who kind of like I'm, I watch him and he doesn't catch my eye like some other players yeah. do. Like he he gets out on the outside and he. You know he kicks the ball pretty well, and he and then you look at his stat sheet at the end of the game. And you're like, he's had three, he's kicked three goals, he's had thirty touches, he's about eleven tackles, and probably ran fifteen k's. And you're like, that he's just one of those players. He gets the most out of himself every week, and he also has the presence of mind to make sure that he stirs up enough controversy, controversy <laughs> with his remonstrating, so that his two hundred fifty thousand Instagram followers all get behind him or abuse him for some reason. Now I don't know. Are about you talking about the celebration? Yeah, so this was something and I don't buy into Twitter issues very often, Danny, because I don't no, believe don't. it's, it's good, yeah. not good for your mind. But I was watching this like long celebrated um, uh, technique that he used, which comes from the NBA, which is basically saying he's clutch, right? He's got ice in his yeah. veins, he's cold blooded. Who, who invented it? I'm not a huge basketball guy. I actually don't know who invented it, but there's like. Um, there's a guy called D'Angelo Russell who used to play at the Brooklyn Nets and um, and played at the Lakers too. He used to do it all the time whenever he hit a big shot. Very yeah. common, very like pop culture. And then the only thing I see is like he's either like talking about injecting drugs or he's telling everyone to get vaccinated. I'm well, like, that's what pretty, I thought. I'm pretty sure it's the I went guy. second one. I went, oh, good on him. He's pro-vax. Good on him. Yeah. yeah. See, who had the presence of mind to think about the vaccine <laughs> at that stage of a football game? What, what was it? How I mean, you've got multi-generations watching at your place, Michael. What was your, your everyone's reaction? Oh, just uh, a, a, a absolute relief to start with. Um, not like- I mean, to, this, to the celebration, to the... Needle. Oh, this is good. Yeah, no, we, we all thought it was great. And, you know, we know the federal government struggled to have an effective advertising campaign to get people back. So <laughs> problem solved. Yeah. Problem solved. Um, because he's big He's big with the, the younger demographics, Bailey, all of my That's sons, it. mate. My, my son's 18 and a big dogs fan. All, all of his mates who follow the dogs, you know, love him and try to sadly emulate his haircut, which is the only downside. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I saw that, and I'm yeah, I'm a, I saw all the social media uh, memes and photos go off, and I thought, yeah, great, Bailey Smith, come on down, wow. uh, Scott Morrison, give him a call. Here's your <laughs> here's your advertising man. Yeah, here's the um, the twelve to sixteen advertising for the yeah, Max. That's, <laughs> that's, that's his age demographic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I Why, is, has Scott Morrison come on your show yet, Michael? I know for for a while he was avoiding you. I know we not we try not to talk politics and COVID, Boydy, but. I just find it funny. I, I, I do have a Bulldogs related link to this, Boydie. I'm oh, going good. somewhere. Good. Yeah. Um, yes. Listen, he, he um, hadn't been on the show for uh, a few months, maybe four months, until the last couple of weeks. He, he came on, um, which is great. Um, but uh, he doesn't. He doesn't do our show as much as say he does the the other morning shows, TV shows, and the breakfast radio shows. Yeah. Um, we keep telling him in his office not to be so shy. Uh, he comes on. Um, we like to think, and not just the prime minister, the opposition leader, all politicians get more rigorous workouts from us and um, tougher interviews, which perhaps explains the long absence. Um, but yeah, no, he, he came on. But yeah, it's in, in the grand scheme of things, it's not not that regular. Can you ask him? In two thousand nine, he was going for the Western Bulldogs. I, people have shown me tweets from the 2009 final series where he is like, I'm saying, Sons of the West, he's all about... And these days, nothing. It's all about the Sharks. What happened? Does he still go for us? Does he, you know, is he is he going to come to a game? That's a very good question. I'll ask him next time he's on in four Thank months' you. time. It'll be too late. 
yeah, now, now, that, now that he knows that we know that, there's no way he's ever coming back. <laughs> he's not going to be out there. That's the nail in the coffin. Or did, was it because Gillard went for us and he went, oh, no, no, I can't, can't yeah, go for the same yeah, one. Yeah, Julie Gillard being, she was the number one ticket holder, whether that um, put him off. Yeah, that's, I, 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 I did see the Western Bulldogs um, support that he was expressing yeah. on social media around the same time. But uh, listen, I don't know. He's um, he's a New South Welshman, so it's rugby leagues is seeing, and it's always it's always dangerous for politicians from um, outside of Victoria. I know New South Wales is an AFL state, care of the Giants and the Swans, but politicians who don't have a great understanding of AFL to try to pretend they do, like Paul Keating. Oh, yeah. Remember, he, he, I do remember. He, yes, he, he, he had to choose a team. Paul Keating was the most unsporting prime minister we've had in recent yeah. decades. <laughs> Very big on the classical music, the antiques, but uh, would not know one end of the footy from the other. Anyway, he had to pick a team to appeal to the masses, so to speak, and uh, infamously in one press conference talked about the great try Collingwood scored <laughs> yes. in the final quarter. <laughs> well, I'd have to argue with this statement that New South Wales is a football state because when I spent a year up there, I spent plenty of time signing Bulldogs balls and Tigers balls, but they were Canterbury Bulldogs and Concord <laughs> Tigers. And the kids would run up to you like, sign this, sign this, you know, like these have got big athletes and they got no idea where you're from, no idea who you are. We'd be heading out to Campbellfield or somewhere out west and... Oh, below belief. It was, uh, we're thrown, thrown to the sharks out there, Danny, when we were young. It, tell you that much. Isn't that where you're, so you grew speak. up, Michael? You're, What's that? You're, you're Sydney born and bred, aren't you? Yeah, Sydney born and bred. My parents still live there. We, we grew up in the pretty much in the shadow of the, not too far from the Belmore Oval, the, the home of the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, so listen, I, I, I grew up following league. Um, I was a West Tigers. I still am a West Tigers fan. Uh, that used to uh, used to be the, the mighty Balmain Tigers when I was growing up. That's right. I, I, I dip into the odd game now, not much. I'm pretty much fully committed into, into the AFL stream. Uh, but yeah, and I said so I I had to make that tr- transition as well. I, I really didn't get into AFL per se until we spent some time overseas uh, when I was working in the ABC's Washington bureau. Until I got back to Melbourne in 2009, um, I didn't really switch on to AFL and uh, it hasn't been, nothing stopped me since. What was it that made you realise it is the, you know, the best game in the world? The su- for superior, you? yeah, far superior. The superior football. code. Oh, yeah, I like superior that. code in the world. I mean, I, I, well, before that, I, I got to see, I was lucky enough to go and see one American football game, gridiron game, over in the States. So very hard to get into unless you're a lifetime uh, ticket holder and, or know somebody who is. Long story short, we had neighbours um, who very graciously took me along one day and it was great, but I just never got into um, gridiron, uh, followed basketball to some extent, never really got into it over there. Grew up following league, actually was more interested in union growing up um, as, a, as a teenager. I, I just really have been captivated by the uh, it just, it's a much more athletic game. It's a much quicker game. Um, uh, don't blush, Tom, but the the players are much uh, more athletic, better built. <laughs> not 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 built like brick shit houses. I'm swearing as well now. That's, yeah, that's all right. Rugby Great rugby league uh, player is. Uh, but the thing that really got me involved was my, uh, by that by the time we got back to the, from the by the time we got back from the states, my son was. Um, uh, six years old and starting to get interested and wanted to, you know, reintegrate into Melbourne, um, the Melbourne scene. And in a couple of years was doing Auskick and, you know, one thing followed another. He started playing footy, adopted the Bulldogs because we live in Yarraville, uh, almost in the shadow of the great Witten Oval. And uh, yeah, things mm. took off from there. I, had to, I did a brief foray into league, Danny, when I went to Sydney. And I went did to this... I had a really um, wonderful opportunity. I had the best possible runway to launching my fandom into league. Went to like this big, um, it basically was like a rivalry game between Parramatta and maybe South Sydney or something like that. I can't remember who they were playing. But it, whoever won basically missed missed the eight. So whoever lost missed oh, the eight. right. Yep. It's at the ANZ um, Stadium. I'm in a massive corporate box and there was like all this controversy, like this like, you know, real controversial decision where it was a forward pass, not a forward pass. And anyway, they they won in the last five or ten seconds. And I still left that game going, Jesus, that was boring. So, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, like, 
This I can go it. similar. I, I actually, when I was last in America about 10 years ago, Michael, um, yeah, as you say, it's impossible to get tickets. So I paid $400 for a wow. nosebleed seat. And it turned out it just, this was the, we went to a few different cities in America, but this was the only time that a home team was playing. And it's actually the biggest rivalry in NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles against the New York Giants. Yeah. Mm. And it was a one point win to the Eagles. Uh, with the Giants missing the match-winning kick, not once but twice. So he missed it. The crowd goes nuts. Referee blew his whistle, threw his flag in the air, and he had to do it again. And all the Eagles fans are just going, oh, you, you, what a, you know, getting yeah. it. And then he missed again, and it was pandemonium. But I just left feeling a bit hollow, mostly because they stopped serving beer at quarter time. Yeah, half time when I was there. It depends. Sunday games is half time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Sunday match. It but it's, it's well. the same at all sport over there, right? It's like um, basketball, football, anything. They serve, it's like an hour and a half after first pitch in baseball or something like that. Oh, and really? So it's, it's great. It's all well and good, except that everyone turns up absolutely roasted. Yes. yes. Yeah. The, the, They're all the, tailgating. It's called tailgate party. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to start that in Australia. A tailgate party. I think it's it'd like go they off. do that on, like on Grand Final day. There's always the. There's pretty much tailgating then outside the ground in the car park. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I can't afford that. I can't afford tickets to the Grand Final. <laughs> the car park. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even afford the car park. Let's be honest. <laughs> you, you park your car there for a week if you're going to go do that. Yeah, get in early. <laughs> Would that be fun before like an AFLW game at Witten Oval? It's be great. Do you go to? I love AFLW games. I'm so excited. When, when's it back? It's back in like uh, four months to go. Michael, do you do you walk to yeah. Witten Oval? Oh, yeah. Witten Whit- Oval's uh, ten minutes. Oh, um, so good. Quick walk so good. To, from our joint. Yeah, and no, I, I love the AFLW games. Um, I've been to uh, VFL games there. Uh, I, I, as long as as well as seeing the games, it's just such a great. Um, atmosphere there. You bump yeah. into friends. Um, it's just, you know, it's it's something the AFL has missed out on since moving to um, Marvel and the MCG, which is, I know exactly why they did it, but you, they lost a bit of the, you know, the suburban spirit. Um, yeah. Could the out, Bulldogs... By going to the Witten. Could we be could we be the ones to start tailgating? This is I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch this to well to you, Boydie. You've got the you got the ear of the club. We start because uh, something great about the thing I that, that thing I love about AFLW that they haven't had uh, you know last season just due to COVID is all the different food trucks. There was only like yeah. one or two this time, but there was like a you know a, a Vietnamese one, a, a Sudan Ethiopian one, all of those. Put them in the car park before the game with the proper barbecuing multicultural feast and and then and then the match that's like yeah. 8 hours entertainment that's awesome let's do it it's what their their argument will be right of course if they can if they can you know monetize it they'll do anything oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they'll put 50 food trucks around the ground if they make sure they can sell enough money enough food i think that Where is a you... great part of it right like the um the suburban footy atmosphere i remember playing um like NAB League games and and like my first ever game actually with the Bulldogs. Danny was at Witten at uh, against Richmond. We we played oh. there in a howling breeze. Did we, did I you was go there. That? Yeah, yeah. Because it was I, um it was before uh the the like the seniors game. So you go to Witten Oval and then you went to to Docklands. No, 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 no. The first oh, okay. then I wasn't first, there. <laughs> first practice game of 2015. Um. We played against Richmond, and it was like no, our first game back at Witten Oval in thirty or oh, twenty years. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, I got I got one goal from a downfield free kick from Pico, I think, and that was about all, the only kick I got for the day. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first game, Michael? If you, you you so you've moved. Oh, first of all, first of all, where did you live in America? It was Washington, wasn't it? Washington, yeah. Uh, based in Washington, we actually lived in. Uh, you like this suburb of Chevy Chase. Uh, which, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which I yes, everybody asked the same question I did when I was over there. The suburb preceded the actor, <laughs> uh, Chevy Chase in Maryland, which is in Mer- uh, just across the state line, um, but very close to Washington. So yeah, lived there for four years. So did the team you see be the Baltimore Ravens, or was it the Washington? We Reds- don't say their name. Yes, yes, the the one, yeah, the team formerly known as Redskins. They formally changed the name. You don't know there was a move to change. They're just called Washington, uh, Washington Football, Football Club. Club. Yeah, Football Club. Right, yeah. yeah, it was the the other the other name when I, I went. So that was the game I went to see. 
Because um, there's a, the reason I ask is uh, I, I was in Baltimore for a grand final once, and I heard that down the road in Washington there was a massive party for the grand final at the Australian Embassy. Did you ever go to that? Yes, I went to uh, one. It was, of course, uh, in the early hours of the morning. It was 2006. Yep. You guys have probably oh, noticed. Great one. Swans, the Swans, Swans one. Swans West Coast, yeah. West Coast, yeah. Uh, and that was great. It was literally in the early hours of the morning, big open bar. Leo Barry. That's that what's, one. What's Leo Barry. Leo yes. Barry. You star. Um, What's that game. It was a good game, yeah, and it, pretty much every Australian in the Greater Washington area was crammed into the uh, Australian Embassy. Um, so that would have been exciting. Who, who was because the, the ambassador's always someone that we sort of know, like an ex treasurer or something. Was it, it wasn't? It wouldn't have been Joe Hockey or no, it was Kim Beasley. Joe's time. No, this guy. But who was it back then? We I had a couple. No, it was a guy called Dennis Richardson. You may not know. He's, okay. He was a former um, head of the Foreign Affairs Department. Okay, um, career career. Diplomat, public servant, not nice guy, um, but um, yeah, it was before him. And I think Kim Beasley came after him. So, what would right. that have been like? What three, four in the morning start, just like yeah. the normal hours you get up now? Basically? Yeah, yeah. So I, I started <laughs> early, Tom. Getting up early set me on my path to breakfast, breakfast TV, and I went. Um, one of my good mates over there, Jeff Elliott, was a, a journalist for the Australian. Their, their correspondent. He was a crazy, crazy. West Coast fan, so he wasn't um, he wasn't too happy Ooh. with the results. So yeah, it was a good night, uh, they, and they put on the meat pies, yeah, and the brownies, yeah. and uh, it was almost like being at home again, except it, yeah. you didn't look at the clock and you didn't see it wasn't three in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. But what do you do after? What do you do after starting at three in the morning on the brownies and the pies? Yes. Oh. From memory. Uh, well, I, I ended up going to sleep very, you know, seven or eight in, in the morning and just trying to catch up sleep late, later in the day. Um, but, yeah, no, it, was, it was just a really good atmosphere. And, and the embassy did put on a few um, sporting events, finals, not just grand finals, prelims, semi oh, right. so, over the years. So, so, that, so the emb- embassy would have been open Saturday night. They would have seen Latham Vandermeer's winning behind. I'm, I'm guessing I absolutely, without knowing it 100%, I, I'd bet my house on the fact that they would be, yeah. Oh, that's, that's good to know. It's, yeah. It warms your heart. Yeah, no, it's strong. Yeah, strong, strong expat community over there, and I'm sure it happens in embassies around the world. You know, it's very, very, it's very easy what they describe as soft diplomacy to get all the Aussies in, prime them with meat pies and beer, and away you go. <laughs> I can also vouch that, uh, Boydie, I, I saw a grand final in on in Baltimore. As I said, um, yeah, it finishes about three, four in the morning. Not too bad. London, seen a couple of grand finals there. That game finishes at. I think it's eight thirty or nine a.m. and yep. you've been on the the crownies or the. the I remember one of the uh, walkabouts just uh, put up a ton of VB stubbies and you're like homesick. You're putting it on and you are very trashed getting on the London Underground at eight yep. thirty in the morning on a Saturday. And yeah. uh, it, it, and you know they, all the cliches about Australia. Every English person is going, "Well, they really are like that, aren't they?" Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that sounds like a horrible way to start the day. Or it sounds like a good way to start a bad week, basically. Yes. <laughs> so you asked about my first game back here. So I guess yes, sorry, yeah, let's go um, um, it was I think I was trying to think today, it must have been twenty ten. It was uh the dogs versus North Melbourne and one moment has stuck with me, as I'm sure it has. I, for you I guys. think I know which I know what one you're gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Barry Hall and Scott Thompson. Oh, yes, the headlock. Yes, <laughs> and I we we were there uh, in the crowd on uh, must have been level two. Like we had we were sort of in the spot. It was in the back pocket, and, and uh, or was, no, it was up. I forget where it was. Maybe up front. But uh, Barry uh, Scott was just you know in his face, in his face, yeah. trying to provoke a reaction. Barry, I mean, you've seen that. You saw it happen. Well, Barry Barry goes to tie his shoes, yes. and Scott pushes him over. Pushes him over, and it and- was. On and on, and I thought this is great. I'm going to get into AFL. I love this. <laughs> I, I I've never been happier as a for, like a young forward. I'm I'm what am I? 2010. So I'm like uh, I'm 15 years old. I'm sort of getting into really getting into like how I'm going to become an AFL player. And to see a full forward with a defender under his arm pleading to the umpire <laughs> at the same time, going, "Mate, it's not my fault that this idiot." Oh, <laughs> It was extraordinary, and then and then the other thing was I was sitting there going like, 
God, I wouldn't mess with Barry. I, I yeah. couldn't believe that he was going after yes. him. I was like, why would you rev up the like angriest, strongest, like <laughs> best boxer in the in the game? Yeah. yeah, it was. I remember because Barry had only started playing for the Bulldogs, yep. so as much as he was our Barry, it was still very that's Barry Hall. It was a bit like when you see a German backpacker just walk towards the Adelaide River edge, and you go, "What are you doing? Don't go near there. There's crocodiles. What? Are you- ah!" <laughs> Yeah. Well, he just he come from uh, he that was wait so that must have been just off the back of the Brent Staker thing, right? Was that the whole reason he was doing it, trying to rev him up again, sort of thing? Probably. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. After he be- belted Staker, um, a lot of teams would try and just get him angry, knowing that it would he would either provoke him and then he'd be you know rubbed out, or it distract him. Sam Mitchell used to get right up his nose, yeah, a fair yeah. bit. Well, Braver men than me. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how, did you, how did you respond, Tom, when you, people were in your face? Uh, do you do you, uh, do you bite back or do you sort of pick your pick your no, man? I mean, I, I would say I can quite comfortably say that I didn't have the uh, the mental fortitude to deal with that stuff. Well, um, now there's two reasons for that in my mind. Firstly, you need to have the like. Um, how would you say the see you next Tuesday in you yeah. to, to deal with it? You really do. Like you <laughs> yeah, need yeah. to have the, Hey, like I like fighting. And the second yeah. thing is you need to be so physically fit that you can handle it because the biggest like um, fallacy surrounding like, Oh, well, if they're just wrestling, like both players are going at it. It just helps the defenders. It, it's plain and simple. It's easier to go like grab people than it is to try and push off people off. So you know, I had a couple of games against, let's say, like Robbie Tarrin or um, who else used to niggle. Like a lot of the North guys were, were big into it. Sydney were into it for a while and it just drains your energy. And it just – and, um, yeah, so I'm quite comfortable saying I wasn't up to dealing with it, to be honest. It didn't help <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, well done, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Tom, we're, the Bulldogs right now are um, – they're fl- famously we've gone from Tassie to Queensland to Perth. To, to Adelaide. To Adelaide. On Have Friday, we talked think, yeah. on this pod about plane etiquette for footy players? Because um, I, I was once at the in the Virgin Lounge with with the team. I'd gone to watch uh, the Bulldogs yeah, yeah. play the Eagles. I think you got me the tickets, which was nice of you. Um, and uh, I was chatting Good to what? our mate Toby McLean, and uh, who was like, "I got the exit aisle. Yes, I'm getting the. I got a suite." And then uh, one of the assistant coaches came over and went. Someone's injured, and you're having to swap now. Yep. You're in the you're in the middle seat. So, um, good question. I don't think it applies at the moment because I think they've got their own planes, so they probably have oh, of course. Of space. Yes, but, all right. But let's just put it this way, Danny. I never didn't fly business really if it wasn't available to me, especially on the the Perth flights because you'd get those. Uh, I don't know what they're called. It's not the A three eighties, but like the big sixteen seat business sections. Yeah. But if you go on the old uh, crappy four, or, uh, what is it, eight seats, I suppose, in business, like Bont would get it or Matty Boyd would get it or um, Murph would often get it. So it's not um, based but, on height. It's based on No, it's fully high. It's, 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 if there's enough seats, it's on height. And if there's four, it's, on, it's just purely hierarchical. So. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, the emergency exit rows were always allocated to the bigger guys. I, I don't think I ever really flew um, – uh, in standard seat. I mean, I can't fit in standard seats, like pretty much. Yeah. My knees, like I actually, <laughs> I sit and have to move my knees like every three or four minutes because of the pressure on them from the metal bars on the seat in front of me because my, mm, my yeah. legs are too big. But in terms of actual etiquette, um, yeah, oh, I mean, there's so many different people. You've got guys who sit there and listen to music, some watch movies, some want to talk the whole time, some want to play cards. I, I imagine they're all absolutely sick of each other by now. I mean, five and a half hours to Perth. I don't know how far is it Perth to Adelaide? Three, three and a half oh, hours. Oh, maybe three. You're going with the wind, so no, it'd be only yeah. one and a half, two. Yeah. Still, but it's also the, the waiting around in the lounge and you know trying to so draining while you're waiting. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, and I, so I know that. Um, so basically, what happened was that the emergencies had to. So they flew from Brisbane to Perth, and then basically off the plane had to do their training session. So, oh. like, I, I like those, like it, it's all these little things that you don't see at the moment. Like, we can all appreciate how hard the traveling is, but it's all the externalities that are attached to it because there's 44 of them who are there. Like, everyone's there. And yeah. they're all in each other's pockets. 
there's no there's no moving around. There's no going to hang out with your mates. It's just like dump all together and uh, and hang on for the ride. I think pretty much. And uh, you've got to avoid journalists uh, and and friends and well wishers who just want to know how's Bont's knee. Yeah. Well, I mean, ju- uh, boy, you, boy you, we you, should really should ask. Do you know <laughs> how's Bont's knee? Uh, <laughs> Just listen to Steve O, mate. Steve O's got every insider at the club talking to him. So when he goes, uh, did you did you see how like how um, carefully worded his tweet was? He's like, not saying anything, but not hearing bad news about Bont wouldn't be too pessimistic. <laughs> like, just say that you know the answer. <laughs> Gee, journalists are just trying to play coy, but he knew straight away. He's got he's got all his tentacles in that club. <laughs> it would, so uh, and also. What was the other question? Um, I, I heard Jonathan Brown talk say on um, on AFL three hundred and sixty last night of the pressure to hide injuries when the cameras are on. You had a bit of that, didn't you, Boydie? Of like, oh, you, you told me you got in trouble once for saying yeah. you hurt your shoulder. Yeah, that was before the prelim. Um, slightly different. I, I don't know. Like, I think it's a bit played up. Maybe in Brownie's day, like when you could belt each other's injuries. You know, like remember when the famous one that sticks out to me off the top of my head is the Mel Michael, Nick Rewald, right? When he did his collarbone or his shoulder and then Mel Michael belted him into oblivion and then he was crying on the bench with like a destroyed shoulder blade or whatever. Yeah. Um, you can't do that anymore. They're not going to let you get away with it. It looks terrible for the game. We don't. And the other thing is Bont didn't do like – he didn't get like a bruised forearm or – a, a sore wrist or like a small crack in his hand. He's got a bruised knee essentially is what I understand. So I think he'll be fine. If anyone can play through it, he will. Um, it'll be uncomfortable, but they'll help him along, I imagine. And he'll yeah, be I like just Dougie, Dougie Hawkins line this week. Uh, even if they have to amputate half his leg, send him on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Doug did, didn't, was it Doug who came out and said, he's like, with or without bind, doesn't matter, we'll win. And I was like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think with I'm much more confident, obviously. How are you both feeling for the game? Are you confident? I don't really know what to expect. I feel like we've had a lot of things go against us so far. We've just managed to get over the hump. Um, yeah. It'll be I, interesting. I, I, I think we've we've got yeah, exactly persevered a lot and there was a the Herald Sun piece on just after the game on in, in Brisbane about uh, you know the dogs having to wait for food and the food you know the, just the, the the stuff the the externalities as you say Tom um, that would get very grinding which adds to the the pressure and the stress um, I I I I I'm pretty confident I reckon I'd be more confident if if Bont and Pelly was playing um, Port Adelaide can't be underestimated though um, we only of course just went down to them. In the, in the last round. In fact, uh, one of the few games I got to see this year, uh, Nikki and myself, my wife and I, uh, were visiting friends in Adelaide. So we saw the Dogs and Port game oh, over nice. in Adelaide Oval. Yes. Um, and, you know, so they are a pretty good team. And uh, sadly for us, have a very strong and a very vocal support base. Um, <laughs> my, first ever, my first ever game at the club was over there. It was horrifying. Oh, they don't. Oh, sorry, they don't. not at the club for the Giants. My first game for the Giants, the first game ever. I've never been so abused. I feel like spitting on me. I was like, oh, oh no, it was, uh, yeah, it was full on vocal, uh, you know, booing the dogs when they stuffed up. Um, it was, yeah, I'm sure they're all lovely people, though. But we, no, we've, had a good, we've had a good run over there. Um, yes, we have. I mean, we've beaten Port Adelaide a couple of times in the last couple of years over there. I don't know why we play that ground pretty well, which yeah. is good. Um, and the the we, this is what we said. I mean, I remember this so vividly. Going into the first final in 2016, silence is golden because the crowd will turn on you so quickly if they think that they've come to a home prelim and you're going to disappoint them. And they get super agitated and super vicious and they kind of add to the whole like anxiety of the situation for the home team. So if Port are a little bit temperamental early, you know, we've got a good chance, I reckon. So this is like you're talking about uh, for the when you took out the Eagles at Subiaco. Yep. They got the first two goals of that game. But they weren't convincing. We, I think we it? missed a missed a, had a missed a couple yeah. of opportunities early. Yeah. Did, so yeah. as soon as we took the front and it was like very clear that we were outplaying them, they just went silent. 
And then there was a couple of moments. Obviously, there was like a Jack Darling Miss Mark on the wing that really stands out. And there's a couple, of, and the the crowd were vicious towards the, the West Coast <laughs> Eagles. And like to us, the whole thing was that's music to our ears, right? The more silence and the more like agitation in the crowd, the more energy it gave us because we were like, we know that they're turning on them. We know that this is our game, and it, it genuinely does happen. There's like a, almost like a home home team and um, advantage up until a point and then it becomes like a, a liability I reckon at some with some oh. firm not with all clubs but with, with those two I would say how good is that hearing that Michael how much yeah. does that just feel you I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm more confident now than I was two I minutes know. ago good oh, no. good um, I'm, but you can't under, underestimate the home ground advantage and what what I did because two things I we wanted to go and see the dogs play over there but I'd never been at the Adelaide Oval it's such a great oval Brilliant. Um, so it box yeah. ticks. But the um they, they do their pre-game stagecraft so well. Yes, better than anyone oh, else. Oh, Never tear us apart. Perfect. So impressed, so impressive. Yeah, the balls of flame. Tear us apart. I, I've actually thought of a banner for uh for our oh, um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Should I uh, uh, let's do it. Let's do it. it. Okay. It could be a bit long though. In excess were great. Their fame will never sag, but Port were about to tear you apart from a 2021 flag. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can workshop that. That's good. Wordy, wordy. That's all right. <laughs> we, we, very, we'll get good, you. Re- very good references. Danny, I can tell Danny's mind's going to syllables. How many? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's cadence. There's, there's, uh, you just got to, the secret to a good uh, banner is you got to write it all out and say it out loud as the crowd would read it. Yeah. So yeah. as long as we get, yeah, the, the wording in there, I'm happy to, to, to workshop this with you, Michael, and Excellent. we'll put it up on socials this week. Yeah, good. My, my people will speak to your people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have to say the Adelaide. I mean, the Adelaide Oval does it well. Perth's Perth's new ground do it pretty bloody well. The pre-game over there too. Yeah. I oh, they got a real playing, live eagle. Have you oh, seen that, Michael? No. I, I I've just I've never been in a place because it's so big, you know, and it's such a steep um, stand, and it's dark until the game starts. So, like the last moment you see is like it's fully dark countdown, boom, and then like there's a massive drum sound and then it goes light and you're like, mate, this is, great. This, is, this, is this is a movie. <laughs> Sensory overload. So what's the go with the eagle? Like a, 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 de- a real bird. A real live eagle flying around. Yeah, is, Eddie. Uh, Eddie the eagle. Is it Eddie the eagle, is it? Yeah, they don't show it on TV because it's he's only it's only eagle size. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I was like a small child. I was like, yeah, this is a good stadium. Oh, my God, an eagle! <laughs> Wait, isn't there a thing that they used to use the eagles to defend the ground from the seagulls? Wasn't that a thing for a That's while? That's at the MCG. They have they have hawks actually. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Against the pigeons. Hawks, yeah. hawks are like massive, like metal cables, but they needed both. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So, um, who would you put in for for Waitman? I know this is we we don't normally talk about you know try and guess tactics or anything, but uh, you know the, the obvious answer for 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 us muggles is uh, you know surely Jamara. We love we've all put our chips on Jamara, and we we're just waiting him to become the Messiah Mark II. Is there? There's probably a smarter answer than that, isn't there, Boydie? Don't ask. I, I we'll ask Michael first. I think. Oh, okay. listen, I, yeah, I, I, I defer to your bigger football brain, Tom. But I, yeah, Jamara would be good. He's he's been bloodied. He, he, how many games did he end up playing? Three, three, three or, or four. four yeah. yeah, three or four. Yeah, a couple um, of good. He struggled early, then he had a couple of okay ones, and then one good one, I think. And then I think I don't think you put Jamara. In. No, I, I, I just think. Yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from, Danny. But is it too much pressure on? On him and so, on such a big stage. Do we play Dominic Bedendo? Um, he's pretty much the only player on the list it's- who hasn't got a game yet. So, <laughs> is this is this just like the the ultimate trump card? There's <laughs> there's no better decision, no better choice than Mitch Wallace, mate. You know that I'm gonna absolutely say yes. Well, it makes no mate. sense not to put him in in terms of like Bont's a bit sore. Um, Cody's out. You've got a guy who can play pinch it through the middle and play forward. Easy decision. I don't know Bang. if it's going to happen. I'll be fuming if it doesn't, but that would be my one and only vote. Worst case scenario, and Bontempelli doesn't play, that Mitchell um, would have to and should come back, shouldn't he, as vice-captain? 
I don't know what they'll they'll do. Um, that's not how that works, by the way. Right, okay, as, so as we've seen all year because Mitch is vice captain and they made him vice captain and then they dropped him after two games. So, yeah. Um, anyway, let's not get into the negative side of things. But um, from an actual positional point of view, I think – I think Bont will play. I'd be extraordinarily surprised if he doesn't. Given that they always make you, you know, within two days, you know, they like they they make bad signals. So oh, we think it's pretty bad. Like he wouldn't play. But I think um, I think that strength is good. And I think the problem with bringing someone like Jamara in is like if it's super super um, contested, dense footy, typical prelim scrappy game, it's going to be tough for him. Um, I don't know what's the have you got the weather conditions there, Danny? Oh, what's what's yeah, going to happen in, in Adelaide? Because that makes a difference in my decision making too. Okay, uh, and, Adelaide and, is oh yeah, raining, eighteen degrees. Yeah, I think you I think you bring someone like Mitch in if you if it's if it's me, that's who I'd bring in. Play a few positions. That fills me with joy actually that it's raining. Yeah. I've got uh, memories of I think twenty nineteen we beat them in the rain over there. Yeah. Yep. So that that works for us. Bits Let's just locked in. We might as well preview the grand final now. How do you want <laughs> cats or demons? <laughs> I'd like I'd like a dogs demons grand final. If, um, oh, I, I, I disagree because then yeah. we're the bad guys. Yeah, I know. It makes the it hard. Choice. And there's one team that I I wouldn't feel too bad. I mean, I'd feel crap if we made it the final and lost, of course. But if, mm. if there was one team that we had to lose to, it'd be the demons. No. <laughs> Can't handle that. No. <laughs> not, not a Boydie fan. doesn't like Boydie. Not, I remember you, oh. you don't. You, I remember years ago you told me this that they were the worst at trash talk because they were just like, like so, like not bad at it as in they get in your head. They're just so terrible at it, but they don't realize it. They were the um the like. I'm not saying this is their team now. I obviously don't know, but they were the arrogant shit talkers when they couldn't win a game, and it was like, <laughs> so guys, we can't. You can't be you can't be doing that before we, and then and then they did that to us and then they stole our game plan basically and then like didn't change any of the positions and they were playing against us with the same game plan in in twenty sixteen um, and I'm like I just can never take them seriously since and of course all of their supporters are just insufferable you know. <laughs> Okay. Tell us what you really think, Tom. Don't hold back. I don't hold back. I don't hold back with Melbourne. I don't know why they frustrated me, but they always have. So anyway, it's all right. So that's no, I'd like a dogs cats grand final. Just because oh. you know they've always beaten us in every final that they've played. We've played them in my lifetime. It would be super sweet to knock them off in a granny. Yeah. The only thing I can't, I can't do the whole get getting to the grand final bit. I know we're only one game away, but it's like there's so many things that need to happen first and go right for us and we're so battered in terms of our scheduling and all that's happened i'm like i just let's just get to this game in one yeah, piece enough. you know because <laughs> the other thing is the problem with getting ahead of yourself you're like whoever comes out of the other side of the draw is going to have a had have have had a, an easier run it feels like than we have yeah yeah so anyway we'll get two we'll, weeks maybe off. we'll defy the odds again and we'll We'll come from whatever we finished. What did we finish? Fifth? Fifth. Fifth. Time? Fifth. Oh, yeah. Boring. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it rival the 2016 pre- prelim in terms of yeah. excitement oh, yeah. and, and building the spirit for the dogs if we were to get through. Well, how about a nice, easy prelim win? We've never had one of those as dogs fans. <laughs> I don't think it will be an easy prelim win no nah. matter what happens. Not over there, mate. <laughs> Not over there. We could win by 10 goals and it'd still be a tough game over there, I reckon. <laughs> hey, so uh, another thing we should mention before we uh, wrap up is um, our beef with uh, Barclay Street podcast is uh, is dead before it even, uh, even got money. We're tr- we were trying, Michael, to start a beef with uh, Bob Murphy and Easton Wood uh, with their official Bulldogs podcast just trying to have a rivalry with it. But Bont has been announced he's going to Frio as like Bont. head of football oh. operations. Oh, Bob, Bob's. sorry. Bob's going over to Frio. Sorry to panic anyone. Bob yeah. Murphy has <laughs> accepted an off-field role at the Dockers, joining Simon Garlic and Matty Boyd over there. Um, so I guess he's not doing the podcast anymore. So that's uh, phew, Pod War 1, Boydy. You and me. Bang. I, th- I think we just take over the official one as well, right? <clears throat> I think so. Then we have to like say nice things about the club all the time and sponsors. Yeah, I, you know, every man has his Mr. price, Danny. 
<laughs> Mission tacos are delicious. I will say that. <laughs> I love good. a. Are they BMW or Mercedes? Who, who's the car thing that sponsors BMW? Uh, wasn't it? Or was, or was it Mercedes? It was, yeah. it was Mercedes Benz vans. Oh, there I we go. Think. Yeah, they're great. I don't think we have them anymore, mate. I, oh, okay. Yeah, they, we, they all got I stolen. We, I think I think we lost a major sponsor last year, so we're one of many clubs. Oh no, we got who did we get in the end? We got CoinSpot, the crypto. Yeah, game. and we got Pal. If I had a dog, I'd feed it Pal all the That's time. That's right. That's is that yeah. Pedigree? What are you talking? Isn't it Pedigree? Pedigree Pal. That's the same oh, brand. Are they isn't same thing? It? Oh, okay. Oh, know. God. See, this is why we don't have the official podcast. It's, def- it's definitely <laughs> pedigree. It's definitely pedigree. We, we've got a, <laughs> Michael can't a... mention a brand just due to ABC <laughs> policy. Yes, generic dog food. So it's been, <laughs> so it's been pretty uh, pretty tense rivalry between you and the Barclay Street podcast. It's, it's a bit like the Bulldogs and the Tigers, and it's a very one-sided rivalry. We hate them. They do not care about us. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Look, they I don't know what they're going to do with it because, you know, no offence to Easton, who's a good friend of mine, but I don't see him carrying the podcast. So maybe mm. um, maybe it'll die. Who knows? They're going to get someone oh. in to do it. Well, we, hey, we're open to suggestions. Oh, no President Watson Wheeler, you know, you got our numbers. And, and we have all the leverage. <laughs> or, or actually, Michael's staying tactfully quiet here. Maybe he's in the maybe, – maybe they've already had a, had a word up. Can't say too much, Danny. Yeah, oh, no. gonna, <laughs> they're gonna, they just have to record at two thirty in the morning to get a yeah, tank of that's, that's right. That, that, that's my that's my price. <laughs> oh. All right, let's finish up with uh, questions we we asked pretty much everyone. Uh, Michael, where where were you on uh, October first, twenty sixteen? I was in the next room here. I'm at home. Um, well, you didn't get tickets. No, what's that? No, no, no. My, my pool's not that great, um, so oh. it certainly wasn't wasn't then. Um, so and we had uh, a barbecue, a uh, few f- few friends over, and uh, living in Yarraville, uh, we could hear every scream and every yell waft down from Whitnoble. There was a crowd there watching it, of course, yes. on the big screen. Um, so every time we kicked a goal and took a great mark, and Tom, when you strutted your stuff in the twenty second minute of the fourth quarter, the place exploded. So we we it was such a great feeling. It was all almost almost like being there. Um, so we watched it there and, of course, we're part of the thousands of people on the Oval on the Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> trying, to see, tr- trying to see behind your sunglasses, Tom, but uh, having no luck. I, well, I had, um, if you just leant down, because I had like these ones that um, like got gradually lighter. They're, very not, they're not functional, purely fashion. Yeah. <laughs> like Ray-Bans, you know, like their tint goes down. As you, so if you looked at me from underneath, what is this being wearing? Like clear glasses, pretty yeah. much. You are about to do some welding. Such a yeah. great scene with expert MCing, of course, uh, by yeah. Mr. Oh. as well. Oh, I'd had so much sleep. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, I think we all had. Uh, Michael, a question we asked Shane Biggs uh, last week, and I think you might actually be able to to, to answer this, is that should Nicola Sturgeon uh, have another uh, <laughs> re- independence referendum in Scotland? And would that affect Scotland, uh, would it affect Brexit and Scotland re-entering the EU? Can I firstly, uh, can you relate Shane Biggs and uh, geopolitical analysis of that before I answer? <laughs> I think he said, yeah, nah. <laughs> he said, go the, go the sturgeon or something. <laughs> uh, I think they should, yeah, Scotland should be its own, own, own country separate from Britain. Yeah, why not? I agree. That's the official uh, state. That's the official position of Danny Boyd, uh, a Bulldogs podcast as well. Mostly because my dad's from Glasgow, <clears throat> so I would be a. I am a British citizen, and that passport got, gets you everywhere. When I was backpacking, when it just waltz around Europe wherever. Now, because of Brexit, useless. You know, I could visit right. Cardiff. I don't need that, so I want Scotland <laughs> back in there, so I can anyway. And uh, who do you think should have won the twenty sixteen Norm Smith? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Danny gets such a kick out of asking this question. I do, I do, because I see, especially when we're on Zoom like this, I can see them look at the camera and try and gauge if Boydie's going to be upset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can I uh, say Tom Boyd? <laughs> you can. That's what I say. Yeah. No, seriously, no, no I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, joking. No, I think I think you should have. Um, it was um, that 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 goal. I mean, we're ahead already, but uh, that that sealed sealed the deal. Actually, can I? I'd, I'd award, award it jointly to you and Dale Morris. There you go. For yeah. Setting, oh, yeah. Setting up the goal. That. Yeah, I, I think Dale had one of the most impressive. I don't know, ten touch 
very few disposal games that I've ever seen. It was extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, we should uh, give, we should give a shout out to I think it was Ryan Gardner who pl- stayed on the field on Saturday the entire game. No, hundred oh, percent game time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the that's the Dale Morris role. That's what he used to do. And then oh, he used yeah. to come off. Yeah, he'd break his rib. Stay out there, mate. Break yeah, his back. Just keep going. <laughs> um, we probably should, considering the magnitude of this week, Danny, and this might um, be our last episode for a while, we should put our tips in is what we should do. Okay, um, sure. What, what do we think? I think dogs by seven is what my hopeful, optimistic self says, I think. Yeah, I close. always tip the dogs. I'm going to go dogs by seven goals. I think we'll break them just due to the, that home ground disadvantage you're talking there about. You and I'll, I'll sort of split, split the difference on, on the low side, maybe dogs by 20. 20, yeah. not bad. 20 would be good. I could probably swallow 20 because it means that the last 20 minutes are probably not too bad. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to do yeah. it. Not another one like the one on the weekend. That was that was horrible for the yeah. uh, the guts. It'd be good to get some party time so you can just enjoy it. Because even yeah. 2016 didn't know till the last second that the siren yeah. went. And till, no. uh, till Tory marked the ball, right? Or, yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I didn't know for like 48 hours that he'd missed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't matter. I, everyone just jumped all over me, and yeah, it, uh, oh. it was very exciting. Um, so yeah, we Boydie and I are doing weekly podcasts whilst the dogs are alive in the finals. Um, so if we go out, yeah, we'll see you again in a, in a few weeks. We might do a uh, season review in a couple of weeks. Yeah, time. that's a good idea. Let's do that. Do, we'll do get a longer someone... one, get a couple of guests on, and yeah, now we're talking. Do, do yeah. a joint one with Bob, Bob, and um, Easton. A, there you go. Farewell, you think? Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. It's a good idea. Would they do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming michael it's uh it's been a pleasure and uh yeah. very exciting week obviously um ahead we're very excited for how the boys go I'm appreciate the invitation tom no thank you very much great chatting to you and uh, great to see you again danny go dogs should we plug should we plug anything apart from abc news breakfast should we you know especially if you have a ratings box just just turn it on you can leave the house after leave that. the house yes yeah. so or if you can time it just to have it on i don't care about the other shows as long as it's on abc tv <laughs> and the news channel between 6 a.m and 9 a.m straight in eastern standard time just do that yeah thank you <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Go dogs. Oh, I just realised Koshi goes for port. It's the, this it's, is the breakfast. It, oh, wow. It's, it's, a, it's the proxy battle between the breakfast hosts. Yeah, him as oh. the port president, which he is, and he is probably the best, the most uh, feral Bulldogs fan in breakfast TV. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, very, right. it's personal. Damn straight. Well, go dogs. Go dogs. Get in the car, I get on my way. Riding on past where the doggies play. Today's episode was proudly brought to you by 8 Star Energy, creating energy for the future and power you can count on. Follow them on Facebook, 8 Star there's Energy. There's no fast way out of foot screen. Says I'm grinding and I'm grooving when I go there. Lying snakes tail in my underwear. What the hell did I just find? There's no fast way out of foot